I'm that one plant dude, and welcome back to Dream Daddy, the Dad Rector's Cut. Uh, yeah. Last we left off, um, we welcome. had a semi decent got date. Dads. With a um, semi decent date with Matt. And I mean, I got accepted into college! And we went running with Craig for some ungodly fucking reason. Ugh. Um. But yeah, no. I. Who should we? Should we go on a second date with Matt? We could straight up. Ooh, we didn't fuck Robert, so we could, like, date Robert. It is absolutely. You know. Hmm. We could go out with Damien? Or Hugo? There's gotta be something underneath that tweed jacket. I just know it. Hmm. Let's go out with Hugo. He's a middle school teacher, yeah. Writer of scholarly articles on the 18th century literature for various esteemed publications. Aw, oh, I know it, I'm sorry. Paint my miniatures, buddy. Muscles? Oh? Uh, my glasses, I actually forget them at home a lot. <laughs> More in love with the idea of what that's fair, yeah. Uh that last one. Uh I worry that people who are against e readers are more in love with the idea of books than actually reading them. That feels very true. Any way that you could absorb knowledge is is fine. Whether that's through like your tablet, your phone, an audiobook, fan fiction. Uh, or like a paper book or a magazine. If you are finding a way to enjoy yourself, that is a way of consuming information and consuming like works of art. Go for it. Go for it. And COVID has absolutely proved that with not just books and things like that, but with also like um, like museums and things like that that you don't actually have to go to be able to enjoy it with the virtual tours of like of really everywhere or people who do vir virtual tours of like the zoo and things like that of course you're more inclined to go it's different to see it in person but also there's just not like a lot of that right now so any way that you can gain knowledge as long as you're growing as a person is valid Anybody who says otherwise is an elitist fucking snob. I navigate to Hugo's dad book page and type in a message. Sorry. Hey Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. Wanna hang out sometime? I wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. Did I do a British voice for him? I think I did. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad you messaged me. And I definitely want to hang out sometime. But I have a favor to ask. A class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today, and one of our chaperones has gone in sick. Is there any possible way you could combine and replace them? Oh, fuck. Uh-oh. I completely understand if you don't want to, I can't make it. I'm going to be honest with you here. It's a middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. I think about it for a moment. Man, it's a lot of screaming kids I'll be accountable for, and they're in middle school. Arguably the worst age to be. Amanda sits si silently trudges into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Hey, how was middle school for you? Bad, but nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being generally terrible. Ugh. Everyone sucks, no self-awareness, and it's just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40 plus hours a week, doing long division and starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day? Top 40's pop? Middle schoolers should be avoided at all costs. Uh -huh. What was your middle school experience like? Mm. 
had my first crush in middle school and I'm still bitter about it. Alexis Stuggs, you've hurt me and I'll never forget. What'd she do to you? I stare off into middle distance, remembering the 24 hours we dated, the three times we held hands between class periods. Then I remembered the bitter betrayal, her leaving me for Arnold Birmingham. Him making me eat dirt in front of her. What a dick. Kids are just tiny Hitlers. I don't want to talk about it. See? Middle schoolers are reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Oh, Mr. Vega requested my help to chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium. I just wanted to know what I was in for. You get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? The last field trip I got to go to was to the clam chowder factory. They didn't even give us clam chowder. They gave us square pizza at a clam chowder factory. Oh, is that why you don't eat clam chowder anymore? No. It's because Bobby Willingham threw up one into the vats of clam chowder. I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. That's... Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no. There's just a batch of clam chowder somewhere that is thoroughly fucking ruined. Huh. Right, let's leave that in the past. Anyway, you should just do it. Mr. Vega sounds like he could really use the help. Plus, you get to hang out with cool fish. Amanda, I get kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. <laughs> Why are you worried that a whale is going to pop out and touch tank? And swallow you whole? Stop. Don't you put fear in my heart. I just would like to talk about the fact that NASA was originally designed to explore the ocean and it has spent every single moment since its, like, creation trying to get us off this fucking planet. <laughs> you have a right to be afraid of the ocean reptar. Well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. <laughs> then it's settled. Penguins outweigh fear of ocean. I sit back down at the computer and let Hugo know I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. I I arrive at the aquarium to find the school buses beat me here. Preteens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wit's end. Uh. Hugo jogs up to me, looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! I don't know. It's been a debacle all morning. We're short-handed and most of the kids won't stop screaming, as I'm sure you know is the case with all middle schoolers. I've lived through Amanda at 12. I am all too familiar. Oh. Great, well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over here. Hugo walks me over to a gaggle of preteens who are all sitting on the ground playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the groups are, so we're off to a good start. Oh. Can you guys put your phones away? All of the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo. They go back to texting. At least they're quiet. Mm. Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's middle school after all. That's so fair. Oh. <laughs> you can tell Aaron voice of this character. We'll see. Classes start filing into the aquarium, and Hugo hands out massive stapled packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. The kids collectively groan and grab the sheets from Hugo. What's in the packet? Mm. Honestly, it's just busy work so that, the so that the teachers can have a moment's reprieve. I think one of the questions is to ask them to sit quietly for ten minutes and think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher hacks. I like that. I I love the color palette for him. It's so good. Oh. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? Oh. We just did a unit on the old men in the sea. Nothing quite like introducing kids to the futile perseverance of a human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Oh. It gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on. They have a phenomenal selection of tropical fish. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments while they text, Hugo and I wander over to a large tank filled with brightly colored fish. Hugo points to a brown and white fish with, with long spines. Hey! That right there is a lionfish. 
Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? Whoa. Ah. Their spines are venomous, too. Nature's hardcore. Oh. You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy-looking fish. Hang on, near the bottom of the hey. tank. That's a stonefish. Most venomous fish in the world. I love that you just became, like, Steve Irwin. And they just, like, keep it there? Oh, they're relatively harm harmless as long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step oh. on them? Tissue necrosis. <laughs> cool. Ah. Nature's wild. Man, Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel overwhelmed. I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, you see that fish hmm. over there? That one? Yeah, that's the. Um. The humphead wrasse. I'm gonna go with the American longfin. I feel like that sounds good. Hmm? Yeah? Did you know that... Mm, psychiatric fish trivia. This is the only species of fish known to develop clinical oh. depression? Wait, are you serious? I feel like serious as a heart attack is like fun and cute, but absolutely not would make him feel like a fool. We're talking fish here. There's no time for oh. jokes. Oh god damn it! That's a clownfish. Right. We lead the kids to the other room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels. I'm gonna kill myself. I'm gonna have to redo these dates. And other marine life swim around in a massive floor-to-ceiling aquarium. The kids begin trying to take selfies with the sharks. Hugo leaves my side to separate two kids who started a fight over a Capri Sun. I walk around the room, reading tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside of the enclosure. After a while, I look around to see Hugo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. Ripples in the water cast blue, moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by hormonal, angry preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. Ah. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? A great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It truly really is fascinating to be able to observe it in such a in such a setting such as this. That's a very astute point, Repta. We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. We eventually make our way to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. I stand around the edges of the tank. Keep a very wary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those seahorse cra those horseshoe crabs have for my well moisturized hands. Hugo rolls up his sleeves and sticks his hand in the water. Don't you want to pet some rice, Brenta? Oh, I th I think I'm good. I don't really. I think I should just stay over here and admire them from a respectable distance. Come on, it'll be fun and informative. Don't make fun of me, but I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any of those things are, but I get the feeling they'll probably bite me, me and my delicious hands if given the chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have had their barbs removed, the horseshoe crabs only eat little crabs, and the anemones are perfectly safe to touch. My better judgment, I approach the tank, slowly dipping my hand in the cold water. I touch a stingray as it glides past me. See? It's not so bad. Feels like a fun, it feels like fun slimy leather. Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? I dive my hand back into the touch tank with renewed vigor. Ocean life. I poke at some urchins and I feel a hard... The hard carapace? Carapace? Of a horseshoe crab. My hand brushes against Hugo's as we reach for the same anemone. I pull away blushing. 
Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I just get a little away some... Wait. That girl over there looks suspicious. Hmm? Why's that? Backpack's usually that wet? Hold on. Oh my god! Susan! Susan, get back here! Hugo runs after a middle schooler and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Wanna tell me what's in the bag? Ah, uh, textbooks? Wanna tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bad cop. Look, kid. Ah, uh, yeah, we don't have time for games here. Whatever it is, it goes back in the touch tank now. You're not a teacher. You can't tell me what to mm -hmm. do. Yes, well, I am. Can you please put the bag down? Next time, we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book bag on the floor. He lands with a wet slap. Put it down easy. It's a critter. We stared at it for a moment before it starts to move. Sweet man, Chago. Hugo leans down and unzips the backpack, or her shoe curve frantically scuttles out across the floor. An employee swoops and scoops it up and places it back into the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? I was trying to free him! To where? Outside? Where he was gonna die? Eh. Susan, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah, in hands where we can see them. Susan sulks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. He gives me a pat on the mm. shoulder. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks. Sea urchins, tiny fish, a rainbow of beautiful underwater plant life surrounds oh. us. Look over here. Hugo points to some seahorses gathered at the bottom of the tank. One of them is in the middle of giving birth. Privacy? Ah. That's actually the male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. A low murmur from the students. They just jump back on their mm. phones. Fun fact, male seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. That's so much. Man, and we thought we had it hard. Oh. I wonder if they have to deal with their kids' awkward teenage two years, too. All however many thousand of them. You seem to know a lot about marine life, Hugo. Ah. It's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school, but should challenge ourselves to find out more about the things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. We'll get there. We finally make our way over to my favorite part of the tour, the Arctic exhibit. Do we get to see the penguins? Ah. Yes, we get to see the penguins. Hell yeah. A group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a good time. What am I so worried about? This isn't what? too bad. Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god. This is steered in the penguin enclosure. <laughs> We're just kidding. This is very bad. <laughs> Is it one of ours? <laughs> it most certainly it most certainly is Molly Henderson, Susan's friend. I look over to the penguins to see a determined looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of the employees. Over on the side of the enclosure I see an exhibit door door ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We gotta stop her for the staff season, bans our school for life. Hugo looks <laughs> around. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs towards the puffin exhibit and addresses the entire room. Uh. Everybody, 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 I have an announcement. The whole room turns towards uh. Hugo. Um, uh. here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is my shot. I run to the enclosure and am greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey! The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. 
Neither can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy that I just end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. Contrary to popular penguins are birds? Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusion when discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow enraptured. Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go! They deserve freedom! Where are they even going to go? They're gonna live in my closet! Okay, Mr. Popper's penguins, pop off. Look, I just don't have time to argue about this. We gotta get out of here. Not until I save a penguin! Hmm. Little known fact is penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, with some exceptions, they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. Oh, if I, I gotta lay down the law. If I bribe her. I prepare to raise my voice at Molly and then hesitate. It's weird for me to raise my voice at a stranger's kid. Is it like a parenting faux pas or something? Money. Give money. Give me money. I will give you $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay. Well, give it to me right now. I reach into my pocket and pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay. Well, I have a 12 and some change, and there's a button here. Is that enough? Pay me the other 80 later, and we have a deal. I moved a shake in our agreement before I suddenly realized there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. We're gonna have to block these birds. Stand up for yourself. Don't block let anybody disrespect. How do I... Oh, okay. Come on. You gotta get lost. Whoa! Wait! Oh, I gotta throw things at the penguins! I didn't know that! Okay. Fuck yeah. I'll take that as a success. Bribery works. Don't eat too close to your bedtime. Don't tell me what to do. I'm having a bowl of cereal when this is over. When changing a flat tire, make sure to tighten the bolts in a starfish pattern. Always remember to call us once in a while. Well, it's dead to be getting sad. Whew. Glad that's over and just in time, too. It looks like Hugo is wrapping up his diversionary penguin speech. Mm. And that's why I think penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clap out of a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. Hugo spots us across the way and runs uh. over. Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Vega! You realize that penguins can only survive at Arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin on your hands. Well, um... It was the thought that counts! No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me eight dollars! Sweet Manchego! What? Just... I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan, I suppose, that so that they can compare animal theft notes. Mm -hmm. You're not off the hook, Molly. Oh. Reptile, did you just bribe a child? Yeah, it was the only way to get her out of the exhibit. I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm not proud of it either, or my Penguin Facts TM lecture, my fucking TED talk. But at least we got her out. Ah. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. 
With the day finally coming to a close, whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way back out of the school buses. As we leave the aquarium, the kids load onto the buses. Hugo pulls me ah. aside. Hey, Repta, thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Hey. Let me take you out next time to make it up to you. You like cheese boards? Um, I love cheese boards. Great. Well, I'm gonna go make sure these kids don't steal anything else. See you around. I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm, I wonder where Panda's at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through yeah. the front door. What's you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How was the aquarium? It was... An adventure. Some kid tried to steal a oh. penguin. We've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before any employees yes. saw. You gotta go into the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo, though. Oh. I'm surprised he helped complete a covert op. He's usually kind of a... Kind of what? Huh. Kind of a stick in the mud? He's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. Alright, too much adventure for me today. I'm gonna rest oh. my eyes. You mean take a nap? There's a difference you'll learn when you become a father. Alright. Yeah, let's see what we did with our date. The bribe had like made massive points. That was exemplary. Thanks. Please don't pirate games. Welcome. You've got dads. If I want to play ooh, if I want to play the game, but I don't want to support the artist, you c will never stop me from pirating a game. Will never stop me from pirating the game. Hey, hey, are you up to anything tonight? Hugo and I were planning to go down to the park, to the art walk downtown. We're wondering if you would care to accompany us. I would normally write a letter longhand, but I've run of distressed parchment paper. Well, why can I see Damien and Hugo's chat? Am I a hacker? But I don't even have a hacker, hacker alley, alias. The feds are gonna bust down my door any minute now. I've gotta destroy this computer. <laughs> Repta, this is a group chat. Oh, thank God. Do either of you guys know how to destroy a computer? <laughs> um, you can run Derek's boot and nuke from a startup flash drive. Once you've done that, it's best to physically destroy the platters altogether. Um... The Victorians were well versed in information security. Reptar, do you want to go see some art or not? Art's good. Let's go see art. All right. Heck yeah. I think I'm going to leave it here. And next week yeah I saved okay um next week I will start up with like art time we didn't do that bad we didn't do that bad with uh with Mr. Snooty Bridges uh, that's totally fine and we'll go on this little excursion with Damien and Hugo and it'll be so fun if I can remember to do their voices because I suck. Everybody has a different voice every single time without fail. Um, but I'm not gonna play it, dude. Make sure to follow me on like all of my socials. Um, you have me here on Twitch. Um, and it's just the same as YouTube. It's that one plant, dude. On TikTok, it is also that one plant, dude. Um, on Twitter, it is just the same thing, but with periods after every single word. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for God of War. Boy.